Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be making one of my favorite optical illusions. The thing that makes this illusion so cool is that it's so simple to make yet it really just fools your brain into thinking that you're seeing three individual donuts or rings that are dancing on top of each other. This is called the spinning ring or the dancing ring illusion. What you're actually looking at though is just one solid object. It's not several separate rings. In fact, if I quickly select some topology here, and I play the animation, you can actually see the illusion breaks a little bit because everything sticks together like that. So this is a really cool thing. If you make it, you render it out, you're really gonna buzz people's mind when they see this. So we're even gonna be adding in this kind of extra asset just for visual appeal. I'm gonna show you where you can get that. Add in some nice materials from Polyhaven. So if you wanna learn how to do this, keep watching. It's so, so simple. And I will be uploading my final result to Patreon as well. So let's jump in and have some fun. So first of all, there are just gonna be free assets that you can download. I'm gonna put a link to them in the description. They're completely free. And one is gonna be this metal plate material. You can go ahead, download download it for Blender with the 2K should be fine. Just download a zip folder. Then there's gonna be this one, the laminate floor. Go ahead, um, by default, it should have these parameters. Go ahead, download that as well. And then optionally, you can get something for visual interest like a statue. So I'm gonna put a link to this in the description. You can download it as well. They're all gonna download as zip files. Once they're in your downloads folder, you're gonna see this, right? So you're gonna go ahead, just like with any other zip folder, and you're just gonna extract, extract them. And then this one here as well. And then just this one here. So now they're all extracted. Inside are gonna be blend files that we can append from. So now let's open up Blender. We're gonna go ahead and select everything and delete. We're gonna go into our front orthographic view. Shift A, let's go to our mesh options. Let's add in a torus. With this torus, let's tab into edit mode. And with everything active, Press Alt and S. And when you press Alt S, you can scale along the normals, okay? So we're gonna actually scale this in with Alt S so it's a little bit skinnier like this, okay? You could make it a little bit fatter if you want to, but I just find it works better when this looks more like a ring and not so much like a donut. With that done, we're gonna tab back out. I'm gonna go to our modifiers. Let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. Let's right click and go shade smooth. Okay, so we have the first one done here, but what we're gonna do in our front orthographic view, we're gonna actually tab back into edit mode. And then we're gonna go R to rotate. We're gonna rotate about this much. Now, there isn't any specific degree that you have to rotate this for it to work. Um, it's really up to you, but I'm gonna just go vi visually eye it. I'm gonna go with something about this much. I would say maybe that's about 30 degrees or so. Then you're gonna tab back out and in object mode, you can go shift D to duplicate and you can go Right click to let go, you go R to rotate. And you're gonna rotate this one till it is the same rotation in the opposite way. So I'm looking at this line here, this grid, and I can see it touches here at the top. So this one here, when I'm rotating it, it touches on that same line. There, That way I know it's even. So I'm now gonna go G, Z, and I'm gonna move it up till it's just, just touching this one over here. Okay, so up on a Z till it's touching this one here. And then we're just gonna grab the bottom one and go Shift D to duplicate and Z. And we're gonna move it up to here just so it's touching. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna grab these two by holding in shift. Then we're gonna select this one, we're still holding in shift and we're gonna go control J or command J. Now they're joined to this one and none of our transforms have been affected, which is what we're looking for. So we're now gonna go G and Z and move it till this is sitting on our floor over here like that. And there we have our little optical illusion object modeled. And at this point, you could just just add a rotation to this and that would be the illusion, but we're gonna make this look a little bit fancier. So let's go shift A. Let's add in a circle. Uh, let's tab into edit mode, go S to scale it up. And let's go E to extrude and Z and extrude it down. And let's just select this top edge and go F to fill those faces. And then go control B and just create a bevel and roll a middle mouse button and just add a little bit of a lip. Optional to do that, but I think it looks better. And then we're gonna grab this edge down here, Shift D to duplicate, S to scale a little bit, G, Z, and take it up. And then E to extrude, S to scale, and let's scale this out to make a nice stage like this. We're then gonna go Control L with these vert steel selected, just to select this object separately, and then go P, let's separate that selection, tab back out, and now we have these two separate objects. Um, this one, let's not worry about that for now, let's just actually grab the one in the middle, let's right click and go Shade Smooth. Let's give that a subdivision surface modifier. Just move it out a little bit. And now this is what we have. Now let's go to our render settings. Let's just enable cycles first of all. If you have a de device um, option for GPU, go ahead and do that. 
And then under the render max samples, I'm gonna go with 55. You can up that number, obviously. Um, I'm doing a tutorial, so I always put it a little bit lower. Then you're gonna go file and you're gonna go append. And let's go to our downloads or wherever your folders are. Let's grab that marble bust. Let's click on the blend file. Let's go to object and then click on that and go append. I'm gonna go ahead and scale that guy up and I'm gonna move him up. So it's kind of just sitting there on the wooden floor like so. You can go whatever scale you wanna do. Um, completely up to you. But what we're gonna do now, we're gonna make sure we grab this optical illusion object. We're gonna hold in shift and select this floor here. And then we're gonna go, or well not the floor, but the rotating wooden disc. And then we're gonna go Control P and we're gonna go Object, Keep Transform. So if you now grab this bottom part and we move it, you can see that goes along. So let's quickly come here to our end frame value. Let's make it 80 frames. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go to frame one and with this wooden disc selected, we're gonna go press N, we're gonna go to our properties panel and let's go to item. And under the rotation, we're gonna press I to add in a keyframe for the rotation on key, um, the first frame. We're then gonna to come to frame 80, we're gonna to come to Z and we're gonna go 720 and then we're gonna hit I to add in a keyframe. Now, another thing you could do, you could actually set this to 40 frames, come to frame 40 here and you could actually just make it um, 360 frames instead, and then only re render out 40 frames. I prefer to do it this way, because it doesn't actually take that long to render, and I like some extra frames. Yes, you could go into an editing software and then just duplicate the first 40 renders, should work fine, but for me, this is just what I'm gonna do, okay? So what with that done, I'm just gonna select these two keyframes. I'm gonna come over here and press T, and I'm gonna make it linear, so we don't have the easing in and easing out of the Bezier curves. So if we come to frame one and we hit the space bar, we should see what looks like a loopable thing. Now we have a duplicate frame on frame 80. So just select that disc and let's just actually come here to the end frame value and just go down to 79. So we don't have a duplicating frame. Okay, so it should look a lot more seamless now. Okay, perfect. So that the animation out of the way, let's get our um, first our front door for graphic. Let's go shift A. Let's add in a camera and move it up a bit. Let's go to camera settings, let's make it 120. I like a nice shallow field of view with this. I'm gonna move that way back. And you can position your camera however you like. I'm gonna go with something like this. And then I'm gonna grab this um, floor over here. I'm just gonna select half of these verts. So I might just have to go to the top view and do that. So just these ones at the back, half of the edge. And I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate G, Z and move it down again. And then go E to extrude and Z and extrude it up a little bit. I'm gonna go Control L and go P and separate by selection. So now that's its own object. I'm gonna right click and go Shade Smooth. And now we have that. I'm also gonna select the floor, right click and go Shade Smooth. So now we can go File, we can go Append. Let's go to our Downloads again. Let's go to Laminate Floor, click on that Blend File, go to the Material, click on Laminate Floor. And let's go file, let's go append, let's go to our downloads again. Let's go to metal plate, click on that blend file, go to material, and then click on the metal plate. Now we can grab our floor. We can go to our materials, come to the drop down, give it the metal plate. Let's grab this wooden disc. Let's go to our materials, let's give it the laminate floor. And let's also grab our torus here and just go new. And let's just give that a roughness value that's much lower. Let's just make it a little bit of an off-white so it's not pure white, and that should be fine. For, for now, we just have to actually grab these objects, go to UV editing, press A to select everything, and then go U and unwrap. And now this is where you can set the scale. I'm gonna go something like this, and grab this wooden puck here. I'm gonna UV unwrap that as well, and maybe make it this size. Completely up to you what you wanna do with that. But now if we go into our, in fact, I'm just gonna save this to my desktop. If we now go into our camera view, we can go control B, drag over the camera. We're looking at the rendered mode. Let's go over to our rural properties. And this is optional. You can actually just give this a sky texture. I'm gonna personally go and just give this an environment texture that I have, but that's completely up to you. So a personal preference, but I've got an environment texture that I wanna use. And I'm just gonna go with strength of 0.5. But you guys can just for now stick with the sky texture built into Blender. Um, it's up to you what you wanna use. You're then gonna go Shift A, just add in an area light to move that up. 
and um, give that a strength of I think 500 because this is quite a large scene actually so you need more lighting more power behind the lights and for now let's just grab this background let's just give that a material let's just make it darker like so and let's just also select the floor let's come to our shading workspace and with this metal plate shader we're just going to go shift a search and get a color ramp and just place it between the diffuse and the base color here just to make that darker i think that looks better and also just give this a metallic value but that's optional so if you now go z and we go rendered this is what we have i'm just going to select my camera and i'm going to go to my camera settings i'm going to enable depth of field click a little eyedropper and then select that bust as a focal object and then just bring this f-stop value down just so we have a nicer softer focus in the background and here we have it this is our result i don't know at this point you can just mess around with your lighting duplicate different lights um, play around with the strength of your hdri this is obviously the sort of stuff you guys you know can figure out yourself it's pretty easy and it's also kind of personal preference let's now kind of save let's go render and give this a quick test render and there we have it you guys can see this is looking pretty good go ahead and render this out now as your final animation and it's just a fun little project you can see here it really is kind of a cool looking optical illusion i'll see you guys next time for another tutorial